Hey, Scott Caulfield here at the NSCA Headquarters Performance Center. This weekend, we've got the 2016 Training for Combat Sports Clinic coming up, and our good friend, Dr. Andy Galpin, is in town from Cal State Fullerton. So he's presenting on Olympic lifting variations for combat sports this weekend, and we've got him here today to talk to us about some uh, key recommendations or variations that you can do with your athletes. So what do you got for us, Andy? Yeah, I mean, you know all the benefits of Olympic lifting. These have been talked about at length at, at every forum or possible. Uh, we know all the different things it does, but in combat sports, sometimes those Olympic lifts are hard to integrate because people think that they take a long time to teach, and sometimes people think that they're hard to work around with the injuries that the combat sport athletes always have. So I thought today, let's go over some of the variations of Olympic lifts we can use, or that I found helpful in, in, in myself working with combat sport athletes, um, with them that helps us reduce our teaching time and allows us to work around injuries that we know that they're going to have. One of the Olympic lifting variations I like a lot for combat sport athletes is actually not even a variation, it's just a partial movement, and that's the jerk. Now the reason I like it a lot is because it produces a tremendous amount of power, or it allows your athlete to produce a tremendous amount of power, and it's actually very easy to teach and very easy to learn. So I've got our awesome assistant Kyle here, and she's gonna give us a couple of demos, and while she's doing that, I'm gonna point out a couple of the common mistakes or limitations you might see in your combat sport athletes when they're doing the jerk. So Kyle, show us what a, a, an excellent jerk would look like. Good, and recover. Back down, let's go ahead and turn to the side a little bit and show them one from the side. Now, while she's doing this, I'll point out a, a common mistake or limitation for a combat athlete. Excellent. Now, see this back position here? She's in a really good shoulder and back position. A lot of the times, combat sport athletes are going to have limited extension of the shoulder or thoracic extension. And so to get vertical, they're going to compromise by letting go of their stomach and getting into that overextension position. All right, relax. Go ahead and stand back up. I don't want you in that position too much. Go ahead and face the camera and do one more for me that way. So you might see a back extension issue, or you might see tilting to the side or twisting of the shoulders because of a trap or neck or other shoulder issues. Go ahead and recover and relax. Okay, so although I love the jerk, it is easy to implement. It doesn't take us long at all to teach someone that movement. Sometimes if we have those issues and you've got shoulder problems or elbow issues that you know you just can't deal with, in the next section here I want to talk about some variations we can put on that jerk so that your athletes can do a similar type of movement. This is a quick and easy variation for your jerk if you have a combat sport athlete who has some issue doing a full traditional barbell jerk. All right, so Kyle's over here again. This is actually, uh, we're gonna use a landmine and we're gonna put our barbell into that. Now, this allows us to do the jerk one-armed versus two-armed. So if I've got, say, an acute injury in my right elbow, I can maybe just do a left elbow or left arm only. Now, I can't load the bar probably as heavy here as I normally can with a jerk. But that's okay, I can still produce a lot of power because I can move fast. So Kyle, give us a demonstration to show us what it would look like. Excellent, now recover. Wonderful, back down. Now you notice she still did a split like normal. You could do that or you could do a non-split variation, whatever you'd like to do. Um, go ahead and actually show us the non-split variation. Great, right? So if you wanted to cut one step out of teaching by not teaching the split, that's fine, it would be even a little bit quicker, and she's still able to produce a lot of power and a lot of force and a lot of speed in the movement. Okay, let's go ahead and do it one more time, and you can split or not, whatever you want to do. And hold. Now you notice again, she's still in that really good back position, but look at the position of her shoulder. Remember in the last video how her shoulder had to be way over top of her head? Well now we've alleviated that problem of limited shoulder or thoracic extension by putting the bar out in front of here by using our landmine. Okay, recover. Excellent, you can actually set the bar down. So that's the variation I like on the jerk. I wanna actually go over one more, which is even easier and even simpler to teach. If for some reason the standard barbell jerk isn't working for your athlete, or even the second variation we showed with the landmine, some reason you still have a problem there, another variation you can do is just a simple medicine ball or any other implement. You can go for a two-handed throw overhead or even a one-handed throw overhead with a split, or you can even take it and throw it vertically at a 45 degree angle or so, and throw it out and away if you have a big field or something to work with. So those are three easy variations of a jerk. I like them because they're very effective, they're very safe, they're very easy to teach, and so they're very, very applicable to combat sport athletes.
Well, thanks a lot, Andy. I really appreciate the tips. Uh, looking forward to seeing your talk tomorrow. Uh, for more information about Olympic lifting variations and different types you can do, check out the TSAC report number 39, Exercise Technique, a simple approach to teaching the power clean in a group environment.